G'day, I'm Yuki San Dev, and in part 8 of this series Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be scripting to catch user input to make things happen. Alright, so in the last video we covered moving, rotating and scaling a cube in script. So today we will do the same, only this time we will make things only happen when the user or player presses certain keys. So you will be introduced to the various types of input. I'm not going to cover all of them because as you can imagine there are a lot of types from like keyboards to mice, controllers, touchscreens, phones, etc. So today I'll just cover two main ways to do it, so let's get going. So we have a brand new project, let's start by creating an object to move. I'm going to go with a cube again and reset its transform, lock XYZ in scale and change to 0 0.5 and this time I'm going to give it a material rather than that boring default material. I'm going to go with this brick texture. These textures and any other files I use for these tutorials are of course always available in my GitHub link in the description. And like before, we will create a scripts folder and then create a script inside the scripts folder. I'm going to name mine mover. Drag the mover script onto the cube because the cube is what we want to play with and we are ready to go. So first of all, click edit and then project settings. Then click on the input manager and then drop down axes. So these names listed here can be referred to in script using their names. Uh, let's look at horizontal for example. So if we were to use the word horizontal in regards to input in our script, Unity already knows to associate the keys for it as left and right arrows or A and D keys. These can all be configured differently of course, but we will leave them as default for this video. And of course we don't have to use the built-in input manager, but it's just one way of doing it. We will use the horizontal and vertical and then the rest we will assign ourselves in the script. So let's close this window and get into our script. Okay, so let's start by setting up two variables for two inputs. Underneath the first curly bracket in your class, type in public float horizontal. And let's make another one public float vertical. All right, now in your update method, type in horizontal equals input dot get axis horizontal and another one vertical equals input dot get axis vertical. So what we've just done is create two float variables and then in update those variables will be updated every time someone pushes the arrow keys or the WASD keys. The two lines in the update method are of course constantly listening. So for example when the game is running if you push the up arrow key then the vertical variable would be updated to 1 and if you pushed the down arrow then the vertical variable would be updated to minus 1. Uh, input is the class and then we are using get axis to specify which item in input manager to use. So horizontal for example is going to use the horizontal values from input manager. Notice that the axis name needs to be in speech marks and make sure you spell it as it is spelt in the input manager or it won't work. At this point if you like you can save your script and run the game. So click the cube and you can see the horizontal and vertical variables uh, because we made them public. Press your arrows uh, and or the WASD keys and watch the values change to either 1 or minus 1. Notice also that the numbers don't just jump straight to 1 or minus 1, they kind of gradually get there. That can be altered with sensitivity and gravity in your input manager. Alright, moving back on in the script. 
Okay, we need to make one more variable for speed. So type in public float speed equals one. All right, let's do the left and the right first. Uh, it's going to be exactly like the previous video code, but with the addition of our horizontal variable. So type in transform dot translate vector three dot right times time dot delta time times speed times horizontal. Let's also put a comment above that line actually to remind ourselves what this piece of code is doing. Okay, now put another comment uh, for forward and back movement. And now below that type in transform dot translate vector three dot forward times time dot delta time times speed times vertical. Right, so now all your code should look something like this. So we already know what delta time is, speed is one, and our variable vertical is zero until we press one of the keys associated with it. So initially with no key pressed, the running equation would be one times one times zero equals zero, no movement. If you pressed the up arrow, it would be one times one times one equals one cube moves forward one meter per second. If of course you wanted the cube to move faster, you would increase the value of the speed variable in your inspector. If you change the speed to four, for example, then the equation would be one times four times one equals four. So the cube moves at four meters per second. All right, let's save our script and see if she works. So pressing run and your cube won't move until you press either the arrow keys or one of the WASD keys. Forward, back, left, and right. Cool. So that's using axes from the input manager. Now let's define some of our own back in the script. All right, so let's put a comment in here to say that we're moving the cube up. Now let's do if input dot get key key code dot. Now when you put the dot in, you should be getting a drop down with all the possible keys and buttons that can be used. Uh, let's choose Q and then put a couple of end brackets in there. Now in between the curly brackets, let's put transform dot translate vector three dot up times time dot delta time times speed. Um, now, first of all, uh, if you didn't get the uh, curly brackets that I was telling you to type in between, then you have to manually put them in. Visual Studio should have dropped them in for you, but sometimes it gets a bit funky. Um, now, also, if you're following this video series, then there is a new item here. It is the if statement. Basically, it's just saying if whatever is or is not something in the brackets, then do what is inside the curly brackets. So we are saying if Q is pressed, then do what's in the curly brackets, which is to move the cube up. So this time, rather than using the input manager, we specified the one key on the keyboard that can be used to perform this operation. So rather than use get access, we used get key with a key code of Q. Uh, now let's do one for down and use the Z key. Uh, quickest way to do this obviously would be to copy the above code and then paste it underneath. And then change Q to Z. And change up to down. Done. Now save your script and let's try it out. Forward. Back, left, right, up, and down. Cool. All right, now one left to go, which is to grow or shrink. So let's get back in the script. So we're going to need the cube's initial size first off so that the script knows where to start growing or shrinking the cube from. 
So we can put retrieve that actual cube size in the script, but it does involve a few extra steps. And at this beginning stage, it might be a little bit overload. So at the end of the video, I will slot it in. Um, but for now, let's just uh, manually set the value. So when we made the cube, we set its scale to 0.5, I think, on x, y, z. So let's set that in the script. So make a new public variable called cube size, and let's give it the default value of 0.5f. Now, continuing our code and update below everything else, let's put if input.getKey key code keypad plus and then in between the curly brackets put cube size equals time dot delta time plus cube size and then transform dot local scale equals new vector three and then in brackets cube size cube size cube size xyz so as you might have guessed, if the player presses the plus key on their keypad, then the cube will get bigger. So we're using the variable cube size and its initial value is 0.5. So when you push a key, that's where it's going to start growing from. And the longer you hold the key down, the bigger it gets. Uh, okay, and let's do almost the same thing for shrink. So copy the above code and paste it below. Change keypad plus to keypad minus. Uh, now we need to reverse the code in our cube size line to read cube size equals cube size minus time dot delta time. And we're done. Let's save and run forward, back, left. Right, up, down, bigger, and smaller. Cool. Now we made cube size a public variable. So if you were to change your cube scale in the scene, then you can easily change it in the variable too. The only reason we need the cube size starting value is so that we don't have the cube start at zero. If you change the cube size variable to zero and run the program, you'll see what I mean when you push the plus button. So there it is, basic input in a couple of ways. Okay, also back in your script, uh, have a look inside your options of key code. There are other options besides just keyboard stuff. There is uh, things in there for mice and joystick, etc. Just a note that the mouse is just listening for clicks. Uh, it's not clicking on something. We will cover that later in the series. All right, so one more thing. We've uh, moved the cube forward, back, and left, and right, and yada, yada, yada. But what if the cube was a car, and you wanted to actually turn the car? All you would need to do is get back in your script, and change translate to rotate, and vector3.right to vector3.up, now the cube will rotate so you can turn. Uh, the rotation is going to be way too slow using the speed variable that we have in there. So let's create a new variable. So let's create a new public float. And call it rotation speed. And give it the default value of 40. And of course, replace speed with rotation speed in your line of code. Control S to save and run. Now you can turn. Cool. Now just real quick, remember how I said that you could retrieve the cube's size in the script? Well, we will cover this kind of stuff in later videos, but if you want the code real quick, then here is what you would do. So back in your code, add a new variable, private transform cube tf. Then in your start method, type in cube tf equals get component transform. And then cube size equals cube tf dot local scale dot x.
You can also take out the default value of cube size if you want to. Uh, it doesn't really matter either way because the value, as you can see, will be reassigned in the start method. So I won't go into too much detail here because we will cover this later, but basically we declared a new type of variable that can only be transform and called it kubetf. Uh, you can call it anything you like, of course. Uh, I just call it kubetf, short for cube transform. Um, then in start, I fetched the actual component transform from the cube and assigned it to cube tf. Then now that I have the component, I can look up its properties. In this case, because it's a square and all the sides are the same length, I just needed one axis of the scale and I chose x. So now if I save this, and now if I change the scale of the cube to, let's say, 2, now run the game and you see that the cube size variable is starting at 2 automatically. So now if I needed to resize the cube at some stage down the line in the game, I don't need to worry about going back and manually changing that cube size variable. Also the cube size variable probably doesn't need to be public anymore, so you could make it private. Right, so I think that will do it for this video, so let's take a look at what we've covered. So we had a look at Unity's uh, built-in input manager and we used a couple of axes from there in our script using the input class and get axis. Uh, we've assigned a few keys of our own to perform different tasks using get key and key code. And we've used an if statement to check if a particular key was pressed. And there was that quick little bit at the end on retrieving the X scale property from the cube's transform component. Now in the next video, I think we might get into the other form of movement and rotation using rigid body and physics with the add force and add torque methods, which are of course, as you can imagine, uh, much more realistic than transform because mass, gravity, force, drag, etc. all come into play. So I hope to see you in the next video.